Okay, excellent. So thank you all so much for coming to the take and make activity show and tell webinar today. Um, this came out about as a suggestion from I think a previous summer reading brainstorm. Um, but people had just been mentioning that take home activities and take and makes grab and goes whatever you call them have been super successful. And it might be nice to share all of the successful activities with each other. Um, so that's hopefully what we'll do today. Um, in terms of our agenda for today, um, uh, we'll just be, I'll talk a little bit about admin stuff just to make sure um, you guys are aware of credits in the video archive. Um, I have a few take home activity resources to share with you all, things that have come across um, some of the listservs that I'm on and maybe would be helpful to you all. And then we'll just move into sharing time and it'll just be kind of, a, you know, informal discussion um, and you, you can share whatever you're comfortable sharing. Um, also, uh, Mary Drew says hi from Whitefish and Suzanne says hi from Alberta, Alberta, Canada. Um, I that's that's really cool that you were able to, to go. I didn't think they were actually allowing Americans <laughs> in Canada right now. <laughs> but maybe maybe things have lifted now that vaccines are happening. So um, feel free to use the chat box. I'll bring whatever comments come up there uh, to everybody, um, but also feel free to unmute yourself as well if you'd prefer to do that. Uh, so a couple of admin things before we start. OPI credit is available for people who attend live. If you're interested in that, please just indicate that on the attendance survey. There's a question about that. Um, as I said, there is an attendance survey in the chat box, so please fill that out. Uh, and I will be posting the recording to this webinar in our Vimeo channel. And I try to include, I'm, I'm trying to do this thing now where I go back in Aspen to the event page and replace the Zoom link with the recording link in Vimeo. Because um, I realized some people were, were looking there. So if you can't find our Vimeo channel, you're not sure where to go, go into Aspen and click on the event page and the uh, meeting link will be replaced with the recording when that is available. So if you have any questions about CE stuff, uh, please let me know. Otherwise, we will just move on. So a couple things that I wanted to mention to you all um, before we got into the sharing part. These were some of the resources that other state libraries and other librarians from around the country have shared out. And some of these you might be aware of already, um, if not, you know, I just wanted to make sure you guys knew about them. So let me actually go ahead and share a different screen so that you can see some of these. Um, so this first resource is actually from the State Library of Iowa. I hope that you can see this properly. Um, let me know if I need to zoom in, but um, Angie Manfredi, who I believe is the youth services consultant there, has put together this really, really great list. And let me actually open up the table of contents. Um, really, really great list of online and virtual programming resources. And there's a section in here with grab and go stuff. So um, this, this, this guide here is like 28 pages of stuff. So I'd encourage you to look through it um, and see what else is in here. But if you go over to the um, table of contents here, you can see there's a section on grab and go stuff. So um, there's all sorts of links here that you can look at um, and some ideas that you can um, draw from. And um, I think this is constantly being added to and, and shared out. So feel free to check back every now and then. There might be new ideas in here, um, but it's just a great place to start if you have, um, if you're not sure about an activity that you want to do. So let me go ahead and stick this into State Library of Iowa, the chat box. Um, and feel free to share this with whoever. Angie sent this out on the Youth Services Consultants Lift Serve across the country, so she is totally fine with having it shared out to whomever. 
Um, so that's one of the resources that I wanted to share with you all. Another one is, um, and I think I've mentioned this in other webinars, but let me put this into the chat box. But the State Library of California has put together this really great database of remote resources and online programming resources. So if you go to this page, you can actually, um, and this this database is also constantly constantly being updated and added to. But you can actually go through here and filter by program type. So you can see their story time, non-digital takeaway activities. So you can kind of filter by there. Um, but you can also filter by audience, keywords, jurisdiction, etc. So it's a pretty great way to look through all of the. Um, resources here and it says which library it's from and um, you know some of these might not be exactly transferable to non-California libraries but some of these might be helpful as well in helping you think of other ideas. Um, there's also the youth services shout out blog um, so let me put this into the chat box as well and they did a blog post um, Wow, May 2020, which is almost a year ago. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, how time seems so meaningless <laughs> these days. Um, but they have a bunch of grab and go activity kit ideas. Uh, so again, another great compilation of things that you can look through here. And then I also just included the LA County Library because they also seem to have um, a list of stuff that you could look through as well. So. There's a ton more out there. I mean, if you just kind of Google take home activities, libraries, you'll get all of these hits from all of these libraries all across the country and all the different ideas that you have there. But these were the few resources that had a nice big compilation of things that would be a good starting point. Um, so I'd suggest starting here looking and seeing if anything in here inspires you, but just know that you can always go to Google and just type in take home activities, grab and go activities, you know, at home craft activities, uh, and you'll find a lot of stuff there as well. Um, Real quick, I wanted to pause and see if there were other resources that folks were using and wanted to share. Um, anything else that's been helpful in planning take home activities. Um, I do know that Pinterest is another big resource that folks have used. Um, I haven't used Pinterest as much, so I'm not really sure what their search capabilities are like. Uh, but I think if you find the right boards, I think you can get some really good information. Um, and I think, yeah, that was the other resource that I heard mentioned. I'm sure that there are also some Facebook groups too that are pretty active, but if anyone has anything else that they wanna share, feel free to do so. Or has questions about anything I mentioned thus far. Nope. Okay. Well, let's go on then. So now it's just kind of, oh, Suzanne says, if anyone uses Discord, there's a library server that always has great information. Oh, I did not know that. Um, is it open to join, Suzanne? Or do you have the name of the channel? I've only used Discord um, in like a recreational sense. So I've never used it for, it's called Connecting Librarians. Okay, cool. So yeah, you guys can check that out and see um, what might be there too. Thanks, Suzanne, for sharing. Um, and Mary Drew says, I've never heard of Discord. Um, so it's a free like voice chat platform. Feel free to chime in anyone else who can describe it better. Um, it's heavily associated with video gaming and streaming because you know multiple people can join into a channel. Um, and so you can have your own little party of, of folks and you can play a game together or just chat while you're playing separate games or whatever. Um, but you can also use it for just, you know, connecting with folks in general, not just around video games. Um, so it's all through through voice um, audio. Does it do video too? I've never used it for video, so I'm not sure. Um, 
but yeah, if you just type in Discord, um, you can find their website. You can download it um, to your phone as well as to your computer, and it's pretty easy to use. So, and Suzanne says you can stream on it as well. Um, so, yeah, there's a lot of different capabilities. I think it's very popular among the Utes these days. <laughs> Um, all right, so next uh, we're just going to do a sharing time. Um, I figured we could do name and library. What take home activity are you are you sharing? Any files and documents that you want to share? You can upload the, those into the chat box um, and you can also share your screen as well if you have any pictures. Um, so the rest of the time can just be folks letting us know what's worked, uh, what hasn't, if you have any questions. Um, and I'll turn it over to you all. So if anyone wants to unmute or type into the chat box, I'll relay information from there as well. I'll start unless somebody else has a wants to begin. I'm good with about like three seconds of silence. Wait, Cindy, are you talking right now? I am. I see your lips moving, but I can't hear anything. Oh, <laughs> oh wait, no, now it goes. Okay. Darn it. I can oh. hear you, Cindy. Can you hear me, Mary? How about others? It says I'm not muted. Oh, okay. Sorry. It was just my internet connection. It oh. was unstable. So that was just me. Sorry about That's it. Okay. <laughs> on, Cindy. Um. Uh, my name is Cindy and uh, I'm at the Bozeman Public Library. Um, we've been doing activity bags since last summer because that was kind of what we could do. Um, and then we just have continued. So what I was gonna show you today is what um, we're doing this month. So I try to come up with new activity bags about, it's probably about every two months, six weeks. And, you know, parents are always saying things like, well, you know, will you have one on March 1st? And I said, I don't know when we'll actually be done. So what I do is I take people's names and I email them when they're done because some things like I have to order to come in and they don't come in on time. And I don't want to be stressed out by like they have to be done by the first of the month. So what we do is we just put in our newsletter that we have activity bags and that to email me and then I just keep a list. I'm sure you guys have better ideas and I would love to hear your ideas because the logistics of it. I have a lot more fun making the bags than I do figuring out who gets it, what. Um, so here's, here's what the bag looks like and it's just a brown paper bag with our sticker on it. Because we do this so much, I didn't wanna spend a lot of money on just the bags. So this is for babies. So we do a books and babies bag, we do a preschool bag, and we do a school age bag. So for April, what we do is we choose a theme um, and we have it go um, coincide with our um, countdown to kindergarten skills. So this, so we put these, you know, I have these, these are on our website. I've talked about these at MLAs before, but they're all the things that kids are getting good at before they go to kindergarten. So the one we did for April is communication and language development, and then phonological awareness. We're just calling that rhyming. So we did rhyming and, um, and talking. So for books and babies, I got, um, I only do about 12 or 15, I don't use it. So I got a copy of um, a lovely board book called Global Babies and, I got this, look at this cute little ball of the world. I know babies are gonna chew it, but um, I just thought it would be fun to actually have a little ball. We try to put something in that's sensory. It gets hard, we put scarves, we put shakers. Um, that's why I only make 12 because I don't, again, I don't spend a lot of money. Um, and then we have a books and babies song sheet so they can actually do the books and babies at home. And it has how, why singing is important and all the kinds of things you can do to communicate with your child. And then we have a handout on 
using sign language with your baby. So simple, really simple stuff. Oh, Amelia, you're gonna be so happy. Look what I put in. This is our old, you guys remember some of you that were around for this? <laughs> I still had some. And then, yay. And then magnet. Yay. So, I still have a ton of those pamphlets and magnets as well that I've been trying they're to. They're really nice in these bags. It's a way yeah. um, to give them out. And so then for the preschool one, um, we gave away, Hopa Mountain here in Bozeman gave us um, copies of this book. Are you ready to play outside? And it's all about rain. It's all about like they're so disappointed because it's raining and they don't think they can play outside. So we decided as our sort of sciency thing to focus on rain. So for the preschool one, we did, well, we did, we did games that you follow directions. That's another communication one. We have there are STEM activities, how to make a rain gauge just using a plastic bottle. And, and then we did our craft was how to make a rain a raindrop sun catcher. So this is using um, blue crayons and a piece of wax paper. And we give them the wax paper and the blue crayons and show them how to do these little um, sun catchers. And the, I just found that online. I was just looking for crafts. And then for the rhyming, we did the song down by the bay where the watermelon grows and they can do puppets stick puppets with those. So we gave them the words to the song and the, and then we put in, along with our blue crayon, we put in popsicle sticks. So they can make puppets, that's the craft. They can do that sun catcher, they can do the rain gauge. And then we just threw in a, a coloring sheet as well. So we try, to, um, we try to do a book. We don't have a budget, a lot, not, a lot, not a lot of libraries do to buy the books. Um, so we don't always do books but we've been partnering with HOPA because they have books, but they don't have a way to get them out into the community like we do. So it's a nice partnership. And so, and I, and I, and we've also used the friends and they've given us books in good condition because they're not doing a lot of book sales right now. So you don't have to do a book, but it's kind of nice. And then the school age one, we did the same bag. I mean, the same book. Are you ready to play outside? And so if we have a school age kid and a preschool kid, we don't, they don't get two copies of this book. They get one copy to share and then the different crafts. So for school age, we did elephant and piggy masks and asked them to act out the book. And we again did the rain gauge. And then we had a whole sheet on rainbows and how rainbows are made and how you can do a rainbow at home, how you can make a rainbow. Um, and then I have this story, a paper story called The Rain Hat that I tell a lot. So it's a little storytelling. We have water cycle in a bag. I know it looks like a lot of paper. Here's 10 rainy day activities. We try really hard to avoid making it a bag of paper, but sometimes, so that's why for the school age kids, they do get, um, they do get, uh, some popsicle sticks to make those to make the puppets and then the book itself so that's what we're doing right now and then we're also working with our food bank and we have an early literacy project we're doing with them and we're doing 150 bags for them so i'm doing really simple 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 things we had somebody drop off a box of all things toothbrushes go figure so they brought them to the library. And so we got a copy. I got a paperback copy of um, Dr. DeSoto and I'm going to give him a toothbrush. And then we have to come up with our science, maybe a science for preschool. This is preschool only and some crafts. And I, I make it very simple because I have to give away 150 of them. So it has to be um, pretty simple. So we're gonna try to keep doing this this summer, but I love hearing, um, all of your ideas. So thanks for sharing what you guys do. Cindy, yeah. when you say school age, what age do you, are you? At kindergarten counting? up to whatever, fourth. Okay. Fifth. I mean, 
I, I just let the parent tell me mm -hmm. what they think they want. Mm -hmm. And Cindy, have you gotten any feedback from folks? Because like I can see that's the one thing that I haven't really seen very much. There's lots of great ideas out there, but I haven't seen very much on like I librarian. asked parents to give me feedback and I actually somewhere here have a document that I keep with that I let that when people write me something nice, I throw it in there. So I have, mm -hmm. I have everybody's comments and I have maybe three or four. A lot of people just say, thank you so much. Thank you. I love it. Thank you. But when people give me specific feedback, like I like how you have the activities are all around a theme and they really have like they they we kept had a whole afternoon that we stayed busy because mm -hmm. of this if they give me anything specific I just put it in a word document and I share that with our directors and our foundation and our friends that's a really good idea yeah but um, you're right you don't hear a lot because I mean you know like one easy indicator of success is like oh people are taking the bags <laughs> and so oh, yeah. you know that's that's what people are reporting but mm -hmm. um just curious if if you were hearing more from folks. I don't know if it would help to put in any kind of a little survey in there because I don't know how we'd ever really get it back. Yeah. I don't think people would remember. There yeah. could be, a, you could do an online link to something, but I don't know. I'm trying yeah. to make it as easy as possible for parents to for sure. just come and get these. Yeah. Um, let's see, Joy put something into the chat. Uh, Joy Bridwell from Stonechild College Rocky Boy Community Library. We have been doing kits since March 25th, 2020. So coming up on a year anniversary, we have done different kits each month. We have done six cultural kits and six general kits. Some mm -hmm. themes we have done are outdoor kits, Halloween kits, native arts and crafts, summer kits, game night kits, indigenous art kits, yarn kits, beading kits, Cree language kits, and holiday kits. And we break our kits into different age levels, zero to two, three to six, seven to 12, and 13 to 18 and adult. Wow. That's, that's a lot of- great. Yeah, that's great. You know, amazing. I didn't say that we also do teen and adult kits, but I don't do those, so I'm not sure. <laughs> but you're, those, those age levels are great. You guys are busy there. Mm-hmm. And Joy, um, I know that you're you're typing, so it might take you a while, but um, if you don't mind sharing, maybe do you have like a general structure for what you put into the kit? Um, as in like you have one craft or you have one like suggested activity or something, that would be great to know just to kind of see. Um, but I also can see, you know, for some of these, maybe having to do a completely different structure each time, so. But thanks for sharing. Those are great ideas. Well, we just base it off of age level. And like mm -hmm. my assistant, Samantha, does most of the research on it. So like with our native kits, because um, our funding for these kits come through a grant because we apply for a grant through IMLS that gives us $500 a month for each event. And that was for in-person events. And then it mm -hmm. changed when COVID happened and we had to change it to kits. Mm -hmm. So as soon as the, like it, today is a year since like the reservation and the, the college and everything shut down. Mm -hmm. So it's been one year since it all changed and we were supposed to hold an event like a week after we shut down and we had to change it to a kit. Mm -hmm. And then so when the first set of kits came out on the 23rd, we handed out 135 kits in one day. We didn't oh, wow. even, we actually had to keep making them as we were going because we ran out. We, <laughs> we, when we put the poster out, we said we were only going to hand out a hundred and oh, wow. we kept making them because kept, people kept showing up for them and people kept That's registering. Great, them though. We require them to register. So over the, this year, we handed out over almost close to 1600 kits over the year. Wow. Because our biggest event was, um, was our, let's see, Halloween, we handed out 402 kits for Halloween but our wow, game, that's awesome with our game night kits we had it out like 250 like now the levels seem to be going down mm -hmm. but then we'll have a surge like right now we have we're doing like moccasin making kits ribbon skirt making kits um beading kits and some of them want to know um you know we're trying to do in person now we can only hold yeah. 10 people in the library so when we do these we have to you know, screen for the first 10 people that register. And then we have a waiting list for those who, if you have someone doesn't show up, we'll move somebody in. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. but for like our when we register them we just ask that the parents call in or the guardian call in or even message us on facebook and we say we just don't we don't want a whole bunch of personal information we just want the parent or guardian who's going to pick it up the child's first name and then their age and that's all we ask and then we just keep it um and usually we have the same families every every month mm -hmm. and then now with the students being back on campus now we have more students picking them up for like younger siblings or for nieces mm -hmm. and nephews mm -hmm. and their own children. So mm -hmm. a lot of our kids will get picked up like by staff and students first. And then we have specific days like on our poster, we'll say like this month we'll have registration from like the 8th until the 26th. And then you can pick up the kids anytime between the 29th and the 31st from 8 to 4.30. Mm -hmm. But because the campus is technically still closed, we have to have them call us or message us and say, you know, we're out in the parking lot, can you come out? Or we usually have a student worker sitting out there with a checklist and then the yeah. bags have the parent's name on it and it's stapled shut and it has all the kids in it. So. Awesome. And um, you did answer one of the questions from Cindy of, do you have the same families every month? And you've said you've had, you know. Yes, we have yeah. multiple families. I mean. Um, a lot of, since COVID happened, we've had a lot of families who are living off the reservation move back. So mm -hmm. each month we're getting different families, different people coming mm -hmm. in. But for the most part, about 75% of those who register each month are the same families from the previous month. Awesome. And then another question to Cindy is, what do you mean when you say you require them to register? Do, I guess, do you have them do it online? We have is them to just... either do it through Facebook or through, um, they can call us and just state their name, their name, their child, children's names, and then their ages. Mm -hmm. This is just so that we know how many we can make in advance. And then if we have to make more, we can make more as we go. But we usually um, buy enough supplies to make at least I'd say between 50 and 60 of each age level. Okay, awesome. Thanks so much for sharing. Any questions for Joy about any of her kits or how things are structured? That just sounds like an impre impressive amount of work. And it sounds like a great program. Mm -hmm. And Cindy says, thanks so much. That's sort of what we do. Folks call when they know they want a kit and love your cultural kits. We created a Cree language coloring book kit. We worked with our campus elders to create, like, we broke it into different categories. And then mm -hmm. it has, like, the Cree word and then the syllabic symbols and then the phonetics and how to pronounce it. Mm -hmm. so they can practice writing it in English and in Cree and then in the syllabic form and then they can color the picture. And then we, we always print it on one side because we send home crayons and markers with each kit. Yeah. So we buy it all in bulk and then we go through a lot of crayons and markers. <laughs> I imagine. <laughs> That's awesome. And that's really great that you got, you're getting other people involved in the creation of these kits as well, too. Um, that's really cool that you involved your elders. Um, and it's always nice to kind of share a project with other folks as well. Does anyone else want to share? Okay, I finally unmuted myself. Um, <laughs> that's a hard act to follow. This is uh, Mary Drew from Whitefish Community Library. And I have one craft, take home craft uh, in particular that I, I think is just the best. We only did um, about three discovery packs, we called them, um, because we've been able to hold story times outside. We don't have a lot of programs because we have very little staff. Um, so we just did some last summer when we weren't having any programs before we got it, got it figured out that we could really do stuff outside. But um, so one craft, um, let's see, I'll have to look. Um, one, one that I did, can people see my screen? Yes, uh, yes, I can I see what you're okay. holding. Up. Yeah. So this is a giant bubble wand. 
and um, it's got a paper clip for a weight. All we needed for this craft was two lengths of uh, string. It's cotton braided string and a foot long and a foot and a half and two rubber bands. And so we put two pieces of string, two rubber bands and a paper clip in our little bag that said discovery kit. And, um, and then how to make a bubble wand. And we also did have a bubble wand event where in our front uh, portico where people could come and make these giant bubbles. So the kids have to go out and find two sticks and then they use these items to make their bubble wand. And what I liked about it was there was nothing to throw away. I mean, they, there was just, Very well, true, of yeah. course they did have pieces of paper and, um, and they work great. And people used them all summer. And every time when we were outside doing story time, if it didn't work out, we'd bring out the bubbles. And um, let's see, I think I can, if I share my screen. Um, yes. Do you have that option? Maybe I need to make you a co-host. You have to, dis it says I'm disabled. Host okay, disabled let, participant screen sharing. I'll make you a co-host. Okay. So I think now you should be able to share your screen. Yes, I think I can. Oh, well, that's very interesting. <laughs> Select a window. Okay. That's not the ones I want to share though. Let's see. Well, I'll share this one because I want to show a picture of a giant bubble that I had, but here's so I can put this in the chat. This is just the instructions on yeah. how to make a bubble wand. And um, it's just easy to do. I like that there is um, like a hunting and gathering aspect to this for the kids to find sticks. <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> um, I've been getting a lot of uh, inspiration from forest schools. Uh, so yeah. that's the bubble wand. Um, and I'll put that in the chat. Then the other thing I wanted to share was, how do I go back to screen sharing? I have to find Zoom. Ding. Yeah, Thank and you. If this you is go good practice for me. <laughs> um, the other th one thing we did that wasn't as great, not as great as the bubble wand, uh, was do it yourself homemade sidewalk chalk. Oh. And for this, cool. you need, and I'll put this in the chat too um so you don't have to write anything down you need a small wax paper cup you need a plastic bag i hate putting those in and you use plaster of paris and when i got this job there was just a huge amount of craft stuff in this back area and some of the things were powdered paint and so you just put a powdered paint and plaster of paris together little kids can pour water in it and stir it. And then of course you have to wait. <laughs> That's the <laughs> hardest thing. Those are two really fast and easy discovery packs. Awesome. If you need to go, they're just, um, especially the bubble wand. It's That's the best bang for your buck that I've ever seen. And those are just the two I wanted to share and I'll put stuff in the chat for people in case they want to look at it. That would be great. Thanks so much, Mary Drew, for sharing. Those are Great. Those, I mean, the bubble wand sounds fun to me as like a 30 year old adult. <laughs> I know. Oh, oh, just do that and go in your backyard and blow bubbles for a while. It's very calming. I can see <laughs> that. I yeah. Did that today. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks so much for sharing. Those are both really great ideas and very simple. Like you said, it's nice when you have things that yeah, you can just like forge from the outside and not really have to spend too much money on anything. So awesome. Any questions for Mary Drew or would anyone else like to share? I'll go ahead and share a little. I'm kind of like Mary's like, ideas were so excited. I'm like, mm, I don't want to go after Mary. <laughs> <laughs> Please do Molly. And everyone else. <laughs> Um, so, because we the library itself was closed for our remodel, we could not do any like. And I I was at home, and I was I wasn't able to even do virtual programs mm -hmm. from home. So we we really 
had to shift the, I'm, I'm from Helena, by the way, sorry. Um, and our libraries reopen, come, come see us when it's safe for you to travel, please. Um, anyway, <laughs> so we started doing activity kits and busy bags probably in September. Um, so the activity kids are kind of for elementary age kids. And then the busy bags are geared more towards toddlers and preschoolers. Um, and one of my goals with both these kits was to make sure that everything was provided. So that way the child or their caregiver didn't have to worry about, I don't have a hole punch, so we can't finish this. Mm -hmm. um, and also making sure that we were as sustainable as possible. And then that nothing was gonna be like, why would you give this to my child? This is going to harm them. Mm -hmm. So, but it's been really fun. Um, and one of, and it was really cool. We got to work in our big read this year, which was um, Into the Beautiful North. And so we had a companion little read with Esperanza Rising. And so like we, we threw in, um, Suzanne gets this great grant to go with her big read. And so she was really able to help me push it a little farther for that. Um, so we put in, so we had the kids make yarn dolls. I should turn the camera on so you can see these. Ah, sorry guys. Um, and so we got paper bags. I actually purchased a stamp, which because my, I don't have it with me. <laughs> <laughs> image but it, it's got our logo on it and it says activity kit and then um that way even if somebody picks it up and takes it home and some like they find it later they know that they got it from the library so for the esperanza rising ones well it comes with a resource list where we said like we tried to connect what the theme was um so for esperanza rising we really focused on you know, some of the themes are family. So you can go on our website and you can learn more about your family using our resources or um, like Esperanza goes through a dust storm. What do you think that would be like? And we linked it to some resources so they could kind of experience that. And then we provided uh, reading lists that were about um, kids who had gone through a journey. Um, so like La Frontera or Dreamers or uh, I put in a link for her right foot just because I thought it was really important to say, you know, you might not have the same heritage as Esperanza, but somebody in your family has gone on a journey to get mm -hmm. you here. Mm -hmm. So just trying to make that connection for them. Um, so we have the reading list and then instructions for how to make whatever the craft is. There's usually two activities in each kit. Um, and I, tr I found that putting pictures has been super important because even with the instructions, some pe people just need those visual, visual Oh yeah, things. for sure. <laughs> so, and then, yeah, so in our Estan's Rising kit, so we had a pile of posters. So I cut those up and said, hey, thanks for helping us recycle. Use this poster here. And then um, we put in just like two little mini skeins of yarn. I purchased over a thousand of those because- Oh we my had, gosh. <laughs> but we, we did more kits for Esperanza Rising than I normally uh -huh. just because it was for the big read. Um, yeah, so that was kind of what went in there and and making sure those were shared. And it's it's been really cool because we get to share them with the branches, mm -hmm. um, our branch locations. And then the bookmobile takes them out to like the colonies that maybe couldn't even come in at all. Um, to our location and we partnered with the uh, school care program so that they could also just have something to do, um, especially like when the kids were not actually in school, it was, it was an online learning day so they could provide things for that. So that was one of the activity kits. Um, and then for the busy bags, so, oh, I have a stamp on this one. Oh, cool. Yeah. And I love they're called stamps, busy bags. Rubberstamps.net has been awesome to work with. They're based out of Iowa and it's a super fast turnaround. Just plugging them because they've been so awesome to work with. Um, so this was a number wheel that we did for 
the toddlers and little kids. And um, again, it, it comes with the instruction sheet, but then on the back side, I put caregiver notes because the kids aren't reading these. And it was just a way to say, okay, this is why this is important for your child's development. Uh, like the number wheel focuses on number recognition, but also because of the way it's set up, they're getting their fine motor skills and their hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm. And then I provided like extension activities, like, okay, there's, there's 10 clothespins in here, jumble them up and then have your child put those in order before they start with the number wheel. And so just providing ways for the caregiver and the child to interact with it and kind of carry it on further. Um, so for the number wheel, I have uh, clothes pins and we wrote the numbers and I, I went a little, <laughs> a little overboard with these. Um, most of the ones I've seen, it's just designed and then they print them and laminate them. Mm -hmm. I worked with our local printer and they printed these on laminated cardstock, which is toddler proof. It's not cheap, but like you cannot rip these. So, but it's basically just a wheel and then it's got different numbered shapes. We went with stars and we went with different colors. And then the child has to count and figure out where two is. So we've got activities like that for the littler kids. Um, awesome, that's yeah, very so that's clever. That's kind of what we've been when doing for the past seven months, I guess, in earnest. And then we'll adapt it for summer library program. Yeah. <laughs> and Molly, is it just kind of you have a bunch of the kits out and then I've actually seen them in the lobby and then people just kind of first come first served or do people? Mm -hmm. Oh, first. OK. Yeah, we um, we put out a new activity. We try and put out a new activity kit every two weeks and we do mm -hmm. one busy bag a month. Mm -hmm. um, and they were in the lobby. Now they're on my fancy new children's desk. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes. Uh, the new library is so beautiful. I went the other day just to pick up a book and then I was like, new book section right there. <laughs> Must go in. <laughs> so. It's so nice to be open and have it, yes. have it available to patrons again instead of just, okay, you can come in two feet and then leave. Yes, it is great. Um, Mary Drew had a comment. She says, I like how people are making kits that keep kids occupied for longer than a simple craft slash one and done. And definitely, Molly, what you were describing with like, even if they didn't have the number wheel, even if they just had like the clothespins or something else that had numbers on it and jumbling it up and putting those in order. Um, there's a lot of flexibility there that people could do um, with that. So um, yeah, it's really great to think about what within this format of the, the grab and go bag, all the different things that you can do. Any questions for Molly um, or anything else? Or would anyone else like to share? I can share. Awesome, thanks Ben. Um, so we have <clears throat> done a couple different um, sharing things, our, um, story times, we're doing a weekly story time kit. So that one's just a craft, but we found that we're not reaching really any of the same people. Most of the people who are coming for in-person story time have sort of said, we don't want the screen time. Mm -hmm. We'll wait until you can do outside story time again. So we're yeah. getting a bunch of people whose kids were in daycare or something who have said, would you be willing to let us still sign up and get a craft once you're doing in-person story time again? Which was yeah. kind of not the people I was expecting to reach, mm -hmm. um, which was sort of interesting. Um, we also have a weekly steam kit that we do. I have one, of, this is this week's, um, and it's a pixel project. Um, they've got Ooh, shiny metal foil here. <laughs> and some other things and you, you build a little viewer that you can put on different surfaces and there's a whole set of instructions. So this is sort of what you should be able to see if you put it on a surface with different oh. colors to sort of break up what the colors are like. Cool. And these, <clears throat> we got some funding from a local business to put those together. Um, they'd originally been funding monthly or bi-monthly like event nights where like there would mm -hmm. be presenters and stuff, but 
Um, obviously that stopped and so we had to find some other way to keep that going. So those have been going. And the thing that those are first come first serve, but you have to check out a collection item related to whatever topic they're about. Um, oh, that's smart. Books. Oh, so you just got to go and choose a book or something related. To yeah, it. yeah. Um, we do pull some. So if you say, I want a scheme kit, and this one is about the pixels. So you need something either yeah. related to coding or um, like light science colors. Mm -hmm. um, so there are some people who say, I want a scheme kit this week, and we pull one of those books off our cart, but they can also go in the catalog and choose their own book, but you need to check something out from the collection. That's really work. clever. That's a great way to get people to, especially to give the nonfiction section some love, which sometimes can be a little ignored at times. <laughs> and then the last one, we are also doing a <clears throat> monthly uh, literacy development giveaway. So I'm reusing summer reading bags from last summer. Mm -hmm. um, but for the zero to four, it's actually for the caregivers of people who have a child zero to four. And so they're getting a book each month. This was last month's book. Um, oh, Richard, scary. A, <laughs> a handout that goes with it. The first ones through the fall were all different sort of stages of um, tips for early literacy development and language development, particularly around shared reading. Um, mm -hmm. Before I was a librarian, I was in graduate school for speech pathology. So I pulled a bunch of resources for that. Um, mm -hmm. And then this month's and next month's are both about math, pulling stuff from the OPI, like kindergarten math standards, to sort mm -hmm. of like, these are some school readiness tips. And then the last, this is just a school year program and it'll run. So the May one will be probably some of the like, um, ready to read handouts and then <clears throat> some information on like norms and like when when do you think you like what is something that's actually concerning and you should get help and what is normal and your kid's going to grow out but it's mm -hmm. something you might be worried about mm -hmm. yeah sort of navigating that sort of question about what's what you're just worried about but it's going to be fine and what actually is something is like, oh, for early intervention purposes, it would be good to mention that to somebody. Yeah, that's awesome. Another like great kind of tact with this format of like, yeah, directly targeting caregivers and giving them those tips. Um, and especially since we can't see them in person, <laughs> um, doing it through the kits is a great way to do that. Um, thanks so much for sharing, Ben. Also, I'm glad I'd like whenever I see Richard scary, my my mind is always just like immediately just like thrown back to my own childhood. <laughs> um, I actually had like an old school, I think, computer game of busy town. Um, and so that always whenever I see Richard scary, it always makes me think of that. <laughs> uh, any questions for Ben or Anyone else who wants to share? Also, just to let you know, in the chat box, Mary Drew, your files finally came through. So people yeah. can download those <laughs> if you want. But I will have I will download those myself and also um, send those out. Then you can make a bubble wand. Mm -hmm. Then I can make my own bubble wand. <laughs> Um, any other questions or anyone else who would like to share? We have about eight minutes left. Cindy says, well, a lot of creative librarians we have love all these great ideas. Yeah. Um, again, I think especially when the, when COVID started, I think my understanding of what a grab and go take home thing was pretty limited. Um, but it has been really cool to see how, um, the wide variety of of ways you can create a kit for people to take home. I have a question. 
Yes. What is everyone's favorite place to buy supplies for these kits? Because I have found myself purchasing inordinate amounts of some really weird stuff for these. So I'm just curious <laughs> what everyone else is doing. <laughs> The hardware store. Hmm. I, go, I go to the hardware store a lot. My my goal is to make something, have the, the kids be making something that can be a conversation between them and their parents and their siblings. And um, it seems like the hardware store, I try to avoid getting a large amount of plastic items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that can be so hard to avoid, though, sometimes. Um, a couple of comments from the chat. Suzanne says, the dollar store, Amazon. Joy says, Amazon and our local Ben Franklin Crafts. Um, and then Ben said, oh, for the caregiver take home, there is a question from the previous handout in the sign up to gauge whether people are actually using the information. Oh, so that's really great. Um, that's awesome that you have that built in. And then Cindy said, local if possible, but I do have to rely on Amazon sometimes. Books always from Country Bookshelf. Um, and I think in one of the other, uh, was it in the Iowa resource that I shared? I think, I don't remember the exact, but like Oriental Express or Oriental Trading or Oriental, Oriental something <laughs> um, yeah. is a company that a lot of librarians have have used and I've seen mentioned um, in when people are looking for supplies. There's so. always also school discount supply. They have oh. good things. Um, well, that's good to know. They're not always the cheapest, but they have they have things that you might not find elsewhere. Mm. Also, Joy, this is a random question, but uh, is your Ben Franklin store like a Ben Frank's five and dime? I'm just curious because like I grew up in St. Louis where there was a Ben Frank's five and dime and then I went to school in a small town in Ohio that had a Ben Frank's five and dime. So I was just like, everywhere has a Ben Frank's five and dime. And then everyone was like, no, we've never ever seen a Ben Frank's five and dime before. So if you have a Ben Frank's five and dime, that'll be three places I know. <laughs> no, that's not what it is. It's just like a uh, local craft store. Okay. So yeah. <laughs> I got really excited like, there for a bit. I know when they, we walk in, it's like, they go, ka-ching, you're here to spend a whole bunch of money. Mm. So. <laughs> Well, that's good too. <laughs> um, ben says the steam kits often use Amazon because there's some specialty pieces in them, which makes sense. Uh, story time kits, I've been trying to use up all of the supplies the library already had when I came on and haven't had to buy too much. Um, so yeah, maybe just go rooting around in your own supply closets. You'd be kind of surprised what you can find there. Um, <clears throat> All right, any other comments or questions? And maybe it's just like another alternative, have no idea how useful this would actually be. Um, but for my own personal crafting, I actually almost buy exclusively from the thrift store um, because I'm cheap, but also because they kind of have an interesting array of stuff there that you can't necessarily find at your regular craft store. So I know it's kind of hard because thrift stores don't really have a reliable supply <laughs> and um, they might not have the right numbers of things. Um, but especially for basics like paper, envelopes, um, binders, notebooks, there's usually a, a ton of things at the thrift store that I've that I've seen. So always just a, a an option there. And Cindy says, we are also trying to use up lots of extra craft stuff and clean out our storeroom. Oh yeah, that, I have found some use for some things I thought I would never use. <laughs> but um, if you, I think it takes more creativity to use the stuff that's been sitting around in the back yeah. room for a long time. Yeah, for sure. Okay, we have two minutes left. Any other comments or questions? Um, 
last minute sharing. All right. Well, thanks so much for coming today and for for sharing. Um, I I'm wondering, I, I'm hoping that I think there's going to be quite a few people who will watch this recording later because they weren't able to come. Um, but let me know if this is something that you'd be interested in doing again. Um, it's always really great to hear from folks and see how everyone is is doing a particular thing because everyone has their own um, spin and style on it. Um, but feel free also if you have a really great craft or take home activity or whatever to send it to me directly. Um, I don't know if you have seen but every week I try and send out a roundup of library resources and this is something that I could pretty easily include and just say hey here's a really great idea and I might actually do that for this next one um, and kind of do a summary of what you all have shared here. Um, so Mary Drew says, I'm going to look on Bozeman's website for the rain gauge. Um, so feel free to keep on sharing just directly with me if you like anything that seems to be working. Um, and I'll try to share that out with folks as well, because I think it really is helpful for people to hear what other people are doing. So um, let me go ahead and stop the recording.